Hello everyone, welcome to the third Fortran tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about variables. Okay, so let's first create a file. We're going to call it, say, tutorial3. .fo8. Okay, and we're going to just say program, and uh, this program is going to collect a user's favorite number and then uh, echo it back to them. So I'm just going to call this favorite underscore number end program. And don't forget the most important part, which is implicit none. Okay? So now a computer has, well when you're programming, you use things called variables. And basically a variable is one piece of information that a user that the computer can remember. It uses the RAM uh, memory, in other words, uh, of the computer to store different values. And uh, Fortran has a number of different kinds of values that it can store. So uh, what we're going to store here is an integer. And if you don't remember from math, an integer is any non-fractional number from negative infinity to infinity. So negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, and to infinity and beyond in both directions, in both the negative and the positive. So, but you can't have things like 2.5 or 2.6 because those are fractional. So, basically whole numbers, including 0 and the negatives. Okay, so, uh, so we've, we've said the kind of data that we want to store. Now we have to give the, the piece of data a name so that we can refer to it. And so we're just going to call this favorite. And uh, normally, well, okay, let's do this. We're going to assign it a default value. So let's say 42. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to, basically what's going to happen is the program will get to this point and then it'll pause while the user inputs their favorite number. And so the way we do this is we use the read statement, which is just like the write statement, except instead of printing out data, we're taking in data and we're storing it in our variable. So we're just going to do the read and then the little owl like before, and then favorite. So basically what it does is it stores whatever the user types in into the variable favorite. And before this, well, let's give some instructions on what to do. So we're going to say... Enter your favorite number. Okay. And uh, now we're going to write, after they've entered it, we're going to write back, sweet. So your favorite number is, and then we're going to print out the number. So if you look, you can see what's happening. You might be able to see what's happening here. Uh, it takes whatever they used, whatever they typed in, and it stores it into this piece of data called favorite. It stores it in this block of the computer's memory. And then we write sweet, so your favorite number is, and then we're referring to the name favorite, so it looks in the memory for the piece of data called favorite, and it calls up whatever was stored in it, the line before it, and then it prints it out. So let's test this. Let's quit and compile it. And by the way, you can hit when you're typing in like G Fortran, if you're on a Windows system, you can just type the first few letters and then you can hit tab. And it'll autocomplete. Okay, so it's compiled and now we can run. And so it says enter your favorite number. I'm gonna say uh, well the default was fifth. 42, so let's say 53. Okay, so that would seem to work. We typed in 53, it got stored in the computer's memory, and then we printed out sweet, so your favorite number is, and then it printed out 53. Okay, so when I showed you this, I, I made sure to uh, that we defined a default value here. Now, Fortran allows you 
and most of the time, most of the time, unless you have it specifically disabled, to not define the default value. So, but there's a problem with this. You should never do this. In fact, well, you know, almost never because, well, let me explain why. If you don't define a default value, then what will happen is the computer will assign a random space in memory, practically random, to this piece of data called favorite. And whatever is there before, I mean, whatever was there before it was assigned to this piece of, to this name, favorite, that's what favorite will take on. So, like, if there is, like, you know, random, I mean, the, the memory is filled with all kinds of crap. And if we're just going to take a random part of it and say, oh, this is favorite, then whatever was sitting there in memory is now suddenly our number. So our number could be anything for as far as, far as we know. Uh, and the funny thing is, this does not happen on Mac. Uh, Mac has a special mechanism, apparently, that will always give you zero for an integer or you know, other sane defaults for other kinds of data. But if you're on Windows and you just define an integer like this and you don't overwrite it like we do here, Let's delete this just to illustrate what happens. Um, and we save it and compile it and stuff like that. Now this is going to not do it. Yeah, it's, so it's not too crazy. OK, I guess it assigns it to 1 on Mac. Uh, but if we were on Windows, we could have gotten back you know, a number like that. So the moral of the story is always assign a very sane default, like 0 or you know something that's everybody's favorite number, like 42 or, you know, something that would just make sense if uh, instead of a random value of memory. But since we were asking for the user's input and we we're overwriting whatever random value favorite might have taken on anyways, then we were not, we don't have to worry about that problem too much. But all that said, let me move on and explain what you can do with integers. Okay, so I've erased the uh, text, but now we can just, um, well, let's, let's do this. Uh, we can we're basically going to just ask for a favorite number, and then we're going to write the favorite number back. So uh, if we run our program, and we type in 53, we get 53 back. If we type in 543, we get 543 back. If we type in a crazy number, we get an error because this is the thing. Fortran, and in fact, pretty much every other program in language, has uh, a limit to how much the data, the data block that an integer is can hold. So an integer is always, well, on, on this system, it's four bytes. And on most systems, it's four bytes. Uh, four bytes of data. It's a measurement of data. Um, and it can never exceed that many bytes. So you can imagine if you have a certain number of digits to work with, you can only have so many numbers. So there is a limit to how big a Fortran number can be. Uh, and I believe it's somewhere around this number. But I don't quote me on this because I think it's, OK, never mind. Well, it's a big number. Uh, and you're probably not going to run into it in most situations. But you should just know that it's there. And you can always look it up if you need to know the exact magnitude. OK. So, uh, and uh, it's also got a lower bound, too. So it's got a maximum negative value. So just so you know about that. OK. So we've uh, shown that there's a limitation to how big an integer can be. but what can we actually do with this integer? Well, for starters, we can perform simple addition on it. So let's take a favorite. And uh, this is might be a little bit confusing at first, but favorite equals favorite plus 1. So let's compile and run that, just to show what it does. If we type in 5, we get back 6. If we type in 6, we get back 7. Type in 600 get back 601. So basically, it's at, well, exactly, it's adding 1 to the number. Now, this doesn't make any sense mathematically, because if you have, if you have the equation x equals x plus 1, that doesn't make any sense. 
in algebra. I mean, I mean, there's no number such that x equals x plus 1. Because, and the thing is, what's not happening here is mathematical equality. What's happening is we're taking, the computer looks at the right-hand side of the equation, of the equal sign, and it figures out what the right-hand side is, gives you. So favorite, if favorite is, say, 5, if the value of that variable is 5, it figures out what 5 plus 1 is, 6. And then what it does is it looks at the left-hand side. Oh, we're assigning it to favorite. So it takes the value 6 that we just computed, and it stores it in favorite. So now favorite has the value 6, which is one more than, than the original value of favorite. So if we do this over and over and over again, we're gonna, just going to add 1, and then add 1 again, and then add 1 again. So let me just show you. This isn't the right way to, this isn't the most efficient way of doing this, but it's the simplest for these purposes. So I'm just going to put a write statement after each time we add 1. And so we're going to compile it and run it and type, say, 40. You get 41, 42, 43, etc. Okay, so we can also do, uh, let's cut out these, we can also do multiplication. Let's say, oh wait, we're multiplying by 1, it doesn't do anything. Let's multiply by 2. Let's say 4, we get 8. Yeah. 65. Let's try just for the heck of it, typing in a, a fractional number even though it's an integer. Yeah, so we get an error. Because it's trying, you typed in a, it's asking for an integer and you typed in a non-integer. Okay, so we can do multiplication, we can do addition, we can also do subtraction. Or we can do division. Now, this is where the problem comes in. So let's say we type in 8, we get 4 back, right? And we get type in 16, we get that back. And we type in 256, we get 128. What happens if we type in an odd number? We're dividing by 2. So if we divide, say, 7 by 2, we should get 3.5, right? Because that's, that's half of 7. But the problem is that variable is stored as an integer. And it can only, so if you divide by 2, the result has to be an integer. So let's try typing in 7. 7 divided by 2. We get 3. Now, 3 is definitely not half of 7. So what happen, what's happening here? We, let's try typing in negative 7. We also get negative 3. So basically what it does is it divides 7 by 2, and then it chops off all the decimals. So we don't get exactly the value that we want. And if we want to get an exact value, instead of integer, what we should use is real. And basically what real does is it stores an approximation of a fractional number. So if we type in 7, we should get 3.5. And if we get type in, uh, let's see, 3.14, we should get approximately half of pi. Okay. Uh, and uh, so that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, hope you'll join us for next time.